world of happiness, world of love, world of glory, world that keep me going, world that satisfies me, my world, my future, my inspiration. My world is the world of imagination. Well, my, my world is the world of glory, world of refugees, world of orphans. Yes, this is my world. My world that hold my future, world that gives me spirit to live, world that can't leave me alone, through thick and thin my world is with me. My world, my world, my life, my world is the world that endures my mistakes, world that can't change even if I'm the mess. Yes, you are my world, you always comfort me in difficult times, giving me support that I need. Here you are my world, surrounding me and protecting me from evils. What else I can say? My world, my hope, my future, my inspiration, my dignity. Yes, you are my world. Thank you. It's been a long time since you've been doing a damage control. No? So, how about we? How 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 are we gonna like? How is this um, NTP gonna be different from what what you've been working on now? You know, that's that's where my concern. I'm saying, CSO, what is happening is these people are not waiting for government, they're taking initiative. And she was explaining, she, she moved all of us this morning because she said the spirit that she has is Vukusense. You've got to get up, you've got to wake up and take responsibility. We're saying that's one part of it. The other part of it and you know in this video, you know that thing that turns around like that. The other part of it is we have a responsibility to open the way. Because what they do is they can get up to a point. But where they can't move any further, we need to know that and Vulinglela. So Vukus and Zela and Vulinglela always must go hand in hand. And that is how we will drive change. Not by government doing it on behalf of people, but government being informed and knowing exactly what the issues are. We've also in Mitchell Spray met a number of small business people. Uh, Mr. Ramaphosa here was so excited because we saw things that we didn't think we'd seen in a township anywhere in the country. Manufacture. Uh, somebody who started out with a small workshop is now going to franchise these already has three workshops. It's very, very encouraging uh, to encounter the kinds of things that we encountered in the space of a few hours today. And if that is a spirit that we can generalize, then we're not engaged with people who are sitting waiting for government. There are people knocking down the door and saying, we can do things, help us, that's all. Just help us, and that's what the plan is about. Thank you. What I've been hearing today is that I know we can really go and go for a game and say, we're going to vision. But when is it going to be They've been told that television, even the Jacob Zuma, the president, our president, have been telling us, have been promising us, us things that are not going to be done like right now. Because I'm living in a shame. So many people are living in a shame, and they just been moved and say, okay, we're going to build you a house. This and this and then, but they will stay there for such a long time. After that, when the house are built, they will take somebody else from other place and then they will bring it again and they will stay here. Then what is the vision? There are so many talented pe people out there staying there. They've been mechanics, engineers, but they're not studying. They're not educated. But why can't we come up with a plan that says, okay, they are not educated. Why is it like our problem say that, okay, if they are not educated, let us use their talent. Let us put them there. Let us make them pass. They can do it. They can fix our cars, but they're not, they're not intelligent. That is why they left schools that well, are so terrible for them. They cannot fix any problem, but what they need to be scared is that they can think, they can do. But if they're writing, that is a problem in the reading. Why can the government come in our places? Look, have a look. Don't say other people. Go there by yourself and see what's happening. So many people and mothers, our mothers are sitting out there selling clothes. That little boy just bought me, just look at them. Louis, just, I want to say that, let's just use the talent. 
and just use those young minds. Take us where the youth have got a vision. And uh, the young lady there then said, I live in a shack and uh, sometimes we are told, move out, we're going to build you a house in this area, and the house is built and you never get the house, it's given to somebody else. Now that is the reality of her life, but it is also the reality of, it is our collective reality as South Africans. Things go wrong, and because things go wrong, we therefore need a plan. But even that plan can go wrong if it is not implemented. And that articulates what those two young people were saying. The key question is, what do we do? There are two choices. The one choice is to lie back and say, things have not happened the way I wanted them to happen and give up. And go and lie under a tree and say, things didn't happen as I wanted them, so I've given up and there's nothing I can do. The second option, which is the real option as far as I'm concerned, is to do something. To do something and say, I am not going to accept this, I am going to do something. Because you see, as young people, life is not a bed of roses. Life has its ups and downs. Life is not going to happen as you want it to. But you can do something about it. You'll find that this plan is not being implemented. You should never give up. You'll find that the shack that you were supposed to move out of into a house, the house has been given to somebody else. That is when you as a citizen, your family and your community, then become active to make sure that this plan is implemented. This plan can only come alive if we, all of us collectively, stop having this sense of entitlement. We are entitled. I end on this, on this issue by saying the speech that was given by John F. Kennedy in 1960, he said, ask not what your country is going to do for you. Ask not for that. He was basically saying, don't feel, don't have this feeling of entitlement. And don't have this feeling of being defeated. Ask what you are going to do for your country. Yes, you are.